welcome friends to this monthly meeting <clears throat> uh the reason for this meeting as i explained before is to keep our minds on track our minds being what they are we move off track if we don't meet and recharge our batteries on the spiritual path the spiritual path takes us in a direction different from the direction the mind want to take us and that is why we need this kind of an arrangement so bring our mind and our attention back to the spiritual path i get lots of emails nowadays people saying we want the radiant form of the master asap <laughs> and Same. i said what will you do with the radiant form it will help us to resolve our problem we have in business it will resolve our problem with our spouses our husbands and wives it will resolve our problem with the children it will uh, we have some little uh, problem with financial problem and the radiant form with us will be able to help none of them have said that we will use the radiant form to move further inwards towards our destination of a spiritual nature like a higher level of awareness how can we get a radiant form of a master whose whole purpose is to draw us on a spiritual journey within we are so much affected by our mind desires mind's attachments that we think even the spiritual path is designed to help in fulfilling these desires of ours and that is why we don't get it it's very simple that if something is designed to take us in one direction and we want it asap immediately why can't we have it immediately and to fulfill th- some things that are not the soul's quest at all they just the mind's desires so that is why i want i wanted to clear clarify to people right here that the radiant form of the master is a step in the direction of going towards our true home which is within ourselves and not outside this outside world has been created only for a certain experience for a short time nobody lives forever not even the most enlightened people not even perfect living masters nobody has ever lived in this physical body forever it's a very temporary thing when we talk of cosmic time of billions of light years existing here and a short life 100 120 not even people live in 100 120 even what is the look at the size of this if you were to say that the world began at 12 am on a clock and today is 5 5 pm human life is less than a few seconds this is it's like a bubble the bubble comes up looks very pretty the sun shines on it it makes a spectrum of beautiful colors and dissolves suddenly life is like that in terms of total time that has been created as yet we are constantly thinking that this is the reality only reality and we have to work everything for doing things here yes we are living in this reality as if it is the only reality for a good purpose supposing this was not the only reality it will be like a dream like a shadow nobody will enjoy it nobody will be affected by it it will be it will lose its very purpose of creation creation the very purpose of creating an experience in consciousness of a physical world a physical body is to make it real so that we enjoy the reality of a created world that is real and that's what we are doing so we can't say that this world should become unreal then why are we here at all we need not have come here we came here to have a real experience real show that takes place in our only reality i want to clarify this this is our only reality at this time we have no other reality all other is talk all other is speculation all other is guesswork and we hear people and sometimes we have an experience which looks like different than this reality we all have had that experience and we wake up 
in the morning from that experience. That we are having that experience, it is a creating a new reality, not this. We are sleeping. The body is not there. We don't even know if we have this body. We have another body that's moving around and we call it a dream state. We call it a dream state, not in the dream. We call it a dream state where we wake up. Then we know it was a dream. And we come back to this reality. That means we are so placed in this structured creation that we can have experience only of one reality at one time. And that is why we are stuck. That is why everything we talk about here, even the highest spiritual goals, are all connected with our reality in this physical world. And we say, this is real. What can we get out of it here? As if the whole business of a spiritual journey is to get something here. So it's not unnatural for people to think like that. But the truth is that the knowledge of the fact this is only one reality out of many. This knowledge, not only knowledge, experience of that knowledge, a state of being of that, of that state, which, which is different from this, gives us an awareness that there can be more than one reality. When we have a dream at night, it looks real. Supposing you have a dream in which you say, I know it's a dream. Who is saying that? Not the person sleeping. Who is saying, I know it's a dream and you are still dreaming? It's the dream body saying, which when you wake up did not exist except as a reality during the period of the dream. This body will not speak there. Yet, if you did not have this body, you could not have a dream. You have to have this body to go to sleep to have the dream. You cannot create a dream without having a physical body alive. If physical body is dead, you can't even dream. You can do nothing. So this physical body, when it's alive, it can create an experience of an alternative reality, which when we wake up, we discover was not real, but was just created for a short period to have a different experience. Let us apply the same analogy to anything like a higher wakeful state. Supposing there is a higher wakeful state, it has to be alive for us to have this state. This will be like a dream compared to that higher wakeful state. Now supposing we wake up to that higher wakeful state and we have that experience, we will feel very convinced. This physical world we had was merely a dream-like thing. It was created for a short period, just a hundred years or something, in terms of cosmic time of trillions of years, and the real thing is here, which is also just a few thousand years of time. We know the time there. We know we can remember things happened 500 years ago. We can remember things that happened a thousand years ago. So we know that what was physical life was a dream. But then we go to sleep and wake up in this body, and we say, that was a dream. Why? Because we have come back into a reality which makes us forget that we could be sleeping somewhere, just like the lower dream made us forget that we were awake in a wakeful body. It's the same thing. It's identical. That at one time we cannot experience more than one reality. It's designed like that. It is designed for a very simple purpose to create reality out of illusion. That we can use the power of illusion to create reality to very big power. That power lies in consciousness only. What is consciousness that has this great power to create an experience and make it real? That's a very big power. That means there is one power called consciousness which can be conscious of anything it wants to be. Consciousness means it's a capacity, it's a potential. To be conscious of anything, whatever it becomes conscious of, becomes creation. And if it separates different levels of consciousness into separate realities, it makes each one of them real and independent. That's how we are living here. 
is there any way to have a glimpse of total realities all the realities at once in which case we will find all of them were dreams or all of them were realities they were just created by consciousness the only way to have that according to the best of my experience and knowledge is if you are nothing but pure consciousness but that's the source you go to the source if you go to the source you discover how the realities were created the you can say if consciousness becomes conscious of something is that creation or is it illusion what is the definition of illusion our uh, definition of illusion is it is not real but looks real that is our definition that what looks real but is actually not real is illusion that way all creation is illusion but by separating it from the cause of that creation and hiding it away we make it reality now this capacity to use the power of consciousness through what we might call illusion to create so many realities is the most remarkable thing that you can ever imagine i have tried my very hardest best to think of something grander than that i have not been able to find one that there can be a single source of consciousness that can create so many realities through what is illusion each one looks absolutely real and we hide each one within the other and therefore we think each one is the only reality not only reality only reality it's remarkable and the most wonderful thing is that when we are in this physical reality we have an experience every night almost every night of seeing another reality we call a dream we know we can create another reality yet it's very hard to believe that we could also have been created the same way how come if we do create a dream reality and while we are dreaming we are sure it's real and we don't even know where our body is sleeping we don't even know where we are we have a different body different function different world we are traveling in that the only real thing and we wake up and discover we did create a reality and yet it is so hard to understand or or explain to ourselves that this could also be a similar experience why should that be so difficult but it has been made difficult because while we are here during the period we are here this continues to be our only reality and we can't get out of it during the dream no matter how hard you try i know people tell me i know it's a dream what did you do in the dream i told everybody in the dream this is a dream when they woke up there was nobody they were all created by the dream no but how can there be so many people if we want to verify if this reality is real or not how do we verify we look at other people if or if this could be real how come is it real for me for them who real for who and the same thing we say in a dream when we see 20 people in a dream who is dreaming all 20 or only one when we wake up we discover only one was dreaming can you imagine that if this series of dreaming and wakefulness could be under our control that means we could decide when to sleep when to dream when to wake up if we are totally under our control we could test out all the levels of realities or unrealities and ultimately find out where all this is coming from when we talk of a spiritual path in the physical world we are talking of that possibility that's a very good possibility the possibility to discover whether we can have control when we are dreaming when we are awake when we are super awake when we are more awake when we are finally consciousness alone that capacity is there with us even in the physical state of dreaming that's the beauty of it as it happens there are certain laws that govern each of these experiences of reality and they are different they are different for each reality they are different for example 
in a dream. You can be here at one moment and a thousand miles away in the next moment and looks absolutely natural. Nobody has ever questioned in a dream, how have I moved suddenly so far away? You can't do that here. The rules are different. In the dream, you can be young, suddenly you are old, and you can grow up 20 years in two seconds, looks normal. It won't look normal here at all. Every level of experience has different rules, different laws. Why these laws have been created? To make the reality more real. It's the laws that capture us. Law of gravity, law of physics, the laws of energy. When you look at those laws, they make it so real. The scientists are now investigating this reality. Well, you could be investigating dreams also. People, some people, some scientists, when they dream, and I met some of the very brilliant scientists, when they dream, they carry their experiments in the dreams also. And they are baffled by this, that in the dreams they do the same thing, the measurements. And they measure certain things, and they wake up, and there was no measurement necessary at all. It is all connected. These rules and laws that we apply to each level of awareness and consciousness and reality are all different, and yet they look normal to us. They look, that's the basis of life itself. That's the basis of everything that's happening, are the laws that govern a particular level of reality. What if we wake up one level higher? We'll find that it is not necessary to be forced forward by time all the time, like we are forced forward by time here. Even today, these scientists studying advanced physics cannot explain that if time-space is one thing and time is merely an ordinate of space, how come in space we can go forward and backward? And one of its ordinates, in time we can only go forward? A very big question, they can't answer. Somebody has now suggested a particular type of an atom that has a, not a spherical form, it's got a form like a pear, and therefore it moves in the direction and that's forcing us to move forward in time, though the rest of the three ordinates of space, we can move in any direction we like. But if you awake yourself to another level, you can have an experience in which you can move forward and backwards. And time becomes merely an ordinate which they are talking of here. But here you can't explain that it doesn't work like that because there is something built into time here It always moves forward. It doesn't move backwards. In another state of wakefulness, it moves backward, looks normal, natural. There are different levels of wakefulness and each one has its own laws and they're different. <clears throat> there is one beauty of this particular level where we are sitting here and that's why I'm talking to you. If that unique beauty of this state was not there, I would not be talking to you. The beauty is that in this state, we are ignorant. Isn't that beautiful? That we have no idea what the future will be. We speculate. And we hear the future is all fixed. And imagine a scientific, empirical science like physics is saying somebody's past here because of nature of time space, somebody's past here can be somebody else's future at the same time. That's what they've come to the conclusion. And they have realized that everything must be predetermined. If the future and past can be mixed up so much, then everything must be predetermined already. Yet we are ignorant. What is the benefit of this ignorance? The benefit is that we can think, what next? It gives us something so unique that we don't have it at any other level. Neither dream state nor higher wakeful states till the level of total consciousness, we don't have it. And what is that? Free will. The feeling, we can decide what will happen tomorrow. Not tomorrow is deciding what we will do. Of course, when tomorrow comes, we know tomorrow decided what we have to do. 
as, as all the previous days. But we then blame ourselves. We didn't use our free will properly in the past to lead to what has happened now. This unique feeling has its plus and minus. It's got a plus and a minus. The plus thing I'm telling you, that you suddenly find that you can do something on your own and not merely drift with what is a pre-laid program. That you have a feeling that you have a free will, you decide your future, you decide what to do next, that you have many options and you pick up the options where to go. It's a beautiful way. If this were not there, nobody could ever become a seeker of a higher state of wakefulness. The only reason that we can seek something is because we feel we have the capacity to decide what to do. If you lost that, you could never seek anything. It should all be fixed already. The capacity to seek is the secret of finding. And that is why it's built into it. It's built into this particular level of reality and consciousness that we, because of our ignorance, of what is going to happen in the future, we have this ability to think that we decide what's going to happen. And because we have that experience of free will, therefore we can seek and find. That is why we are here. If we could not seek, I wouldn't sit here and talk anything to you. We'd just be living our life in a drift, like it's all a play, it's going on, we have no control. We are drifting life. But we have this power to seek. What is the negative side? There's a plus side, very big plus side. And I think it overwhelms the negative side. But people don't think so. Negative side is, if we think that we can decide, do things, and then when we decide things, we apply another, another factor to it, a factor of morality, of good and evil. We apply that factor in making a choice. This is a good choice. This is a bad thing. This is evil. This is good. When we do that, we automatically build into ourselves the result of that good or bad by being rewarded or punished. The law of karma is born only because of that. So the very thing that's so good for us also creates another law in which we are trapped. The law of karma is created because of that power to decide what we will do, which may indeed merely be an illusion. Now, if the power to decide is illusion, is this illusion sitting independently or is it part of the illusion of this creation itself? If the whole system is being created by power of consciousness through illusion to create realities, is the reality of our seeking independent or it's part of it? The truth is it's part of it, which is very good. If it is part of it, then we have to decide what part of the functions we are having as physical bodies with physical sense perceptions, with physical mind, with physical consciousness, what part are we using in order to make the decisions and create the law of karma? If you look at that, it's not the body that decides, it's not the sense perception that decides, it's the mind that decides, the thinking mind. It's very easy to know that the part of the equipment we have today, as life with forms around it, the part of that life which is creating this great unique feature in this particular state of reality is the mind, the thinking mind. If it didn't think, it would never create anything. Supposing you stop thinking, there'll be no karma. Imagine that one simple function of one simple part of the system we are carrying with us in the physical body is creating the whole law of karma. Law of karma is not coming from anywhere else at all. It's coming from the application and use of one simple thing that is part of our structure as physical human beings working with a mind, sense perceptions and a physical body. So we're creating the law of karma and then applying it to ourselves and getting trapped into it. This is nice to be aware of it because when you become aware of it, you discover if that is all, if that is all that the mind is creating law of karma itself, 
What would happen if we transcend the mind? If you transcend the mind, you transcend the law of karma completely. The so karma is a very local experience built only where the mind exists. We can also find out where all can the mind exist. The mind can exist in our dream states. We know, we think in the dreams. We don't decide, but we think. Sometimes we think we are deciding also, but things move so fast in a dream. Notice very carefully, when you have a dream, you're thinking about it, your decisions are not creating any part of the dream. But you are thinking in the dream. You're using your mind without being able to create anything out of that thinking. When you are in the wakeful state in a physical self, your thinking is creating what you feel is the whole experience and becomes real. When you are above this physical body and have knowledge of the future, which happens instantly when you wake up, when you can see the whole thing is pre-laid, your free will goes away. You have no free will in the astral plane. No free will in the causal plane. You discover the whole thing was a show set up completely intact. It's only the physical plane where ignorance provided us this beautiful experience. Therefore, when we find that the mind functions differently depending upon what else we are carrying, the dream body functions differently. Physical body functions differently. Astral body functions differently. Causal body, there is no astral body, no sense perceptions, no physical body. It's the mind alone functioning and finds out it's the creator of the karma and creator of everything at the lower levels. Can't do anything. If you can transcend the mind, that means like you transcend the body by leaving it behind. Every time we die, we leave the body behind. Every time we die in the astral plane, we leave the sense perception behind. If you could die in the causal plane, the cause of all these things that are happening, you would find that without the mind, we discover a reality that you cannot discover anywhere else. The spiritual path, which I have come to share with you, based upon what I got from my pastor here, sitting, whose picture you see behind. This spiritual path starts from that point. Go beyond the mind. That's where the spiritual journey starts. Not here. This preparation. This preparation to find out who we are and who are covered by these things and creating these illusions of different worlds. Mind is a cover. Sense perceptions are a cover. Physical body is a cover. It covers upon ourselves. Discover who we are as pure consciousness, a unit of consciousness, the creative power that can create everything. Anything it is, can be conscious of, it's beyond imagination, even imagination limited. Imagination limited to mental uh, application. This is beyond that. There's no limit, infinite limit of consciousness to be conscious of anything, it becomes creation. Now that power is our reality as an individual soul. Great Master said his spiritual journey starts from that point to discover that you are an individual soul and ends where you discover there is only one soul, not individual souls. And that is where we discover that even individuation, a separation of experience of yourself is limited but the individuation, which is also a cover, as you remove that, you find there's only one totality of consciousness responsible for everything. The only reality from which all realities have been born. And sometimes one can say, is that also a created reality? Possibly. How can we say when we discover that all the so-called realities, which look so real at each level, each one looks more real than the other, what about Totality of consciousness may also be just a, a created reality, that we are conscious. There may be nothing beyond that, or maybe something which creates that. To be able to discover that, that is there anything beyond that, is true spirituality, true path. And can you imagine 
that because of our ignorance in the physical form of life, we have the capacity while we are here to discover even that. Now this is absolutely beyond words. A friend of mine wrote to me that he is doing various kind of studies, doing course of miracles, he's doing various things that he finds, maybe they are higher than the teachings of the master which I am following. I wrote back to him that I have myself followed those. I have not only done a course in miracles, I have also taught the course of miracles. I qualified to be a teacher and I read the manual of teachers. But I found at the end that it was all applying through our mind. Now he, I told him that there is something in these teachings that goes way beyond that. He now wants me to describe it. Now I am having this little problem, how to describe something that is outside of time and space. I can't find the words. If anybody has a good suggestion to me, I'd like to see how to describe something from which time and space were created. Time and space were created by the mind. What would be our state like? How can you describe? I have tried very hard to describe and I failed. Even today, if I want to describe something in words, in any language, I fail. Because all our training in language is based upon what we can observe in time and space. Not only that, we take time and space for granted. Say, well, before the mind was born, what was there? The word before does not occur there. The word before is only in time. What was the beginning? There was no beginning. Then, what about now? Is everything happening now? Now has a time also. You can't use the word now for zero time. How do you describe it? And yet, while you are a physical human being, you can experience it. You can be in that state and have no description at all. So how do these people who want to say, go beyond the mind, describe that? Some say, neti, neti, not this, not this, not this. Okay, reject everything. Now we described it negatively. It's nothing that you can describe. Or you can say, beautiful gardens are there. Tall trees are there. One master said it. Said Sibdhyal Singh Swamiji of Agra, he described that. Tall trees, miles long, high, laden with rubies and diamonds and jewelry. Most of his audience were women, you know, those days. So diamond, otherwise it would have been something else. Might have been if in America he talked, he would say they're laden with guns and bombs and all. <laughs> he could have said something else. So. These are descriptions we are using of the physical plane, not even an astral plane, not causal plane. We are trying to describe things which cannot be described whatsoever in terms of things that are physical, because there's no way to describe any other way. And why describe physically that which cannot be described? Because then where is the incentive for a human being living in a physical reality to do anything about it? How do you create an incentive? Look, you are very lucky, very most fortunate beings in the 8.4 million species of life form that are created in this world. You are the luckiest in one form of a human form. How are we lucky? We are having hard times. Our karma is so bad. We are suffering so much. How are we lucky? You are lucky because this is the only form because of your karma, because of this mind's work, because of ignorance, because of lack of knowledge, you can find something that is way beyond all these. Only possibility, how lucky we are. There is no other form that can do this at all. Not even the highest forms. People have had experiences of going to higher levels. They enjoyed it. Great. They explained to me, they described some of these experiences. And especially in the days when I was at Harvard University, there were two professors, you must have heard about it, and Professor Richard Alpert and Timothy Leary in the uh, Department of uh, Psychology. And they were experimenting with those mushrooms and LSD and DMT, all those came afterwards. 
they were describing their alternative realities that they experience. And I was describing better than them without having any stuff of theirs. They were drawing. So we used to compare notes. When they describe that experience, the experience takes place, and then after that, they're back to this reality. Nobody ever said that we could, from that reality, do something about this. They're back to square one. You can have any experience. People today say, we go to some places in Peru, we go to other South American places, or in Florida, some people, <laughs> they gave us a drink. They gave us a drink, and we have an alternative experience. We go there. Wonderful. And then what happens after that? Back to square one. Back to this reality. How does a different experience make you awake? It doesn't awaken you to, from this reality. It still holds you down to this reality. So that is why all these experiences that are possible here, you can have any number of experiences. They're experiences. Remember, when you use the word experience, it is not reality. It's a created reality. It's an experience of somebody having an experience. And the awareness of the somebody who is having experience is the reality, not the experience, no matter what. No matter how high the experience may be, no matter how glorious the experience may be, it does not give you knowledge of the truth unless you know the truth about the self that is having the experience. There was a very nice saint in India. His, and I mentioned his name before, Baba Fakir Chand. They call him the unknowing saint because he said, I know nothing. He said openly. He said, I know nothing. He said, in one of his discourses, I attended a few of his discourses. He was our neighbor in a town called Hushyarpur in India. And a good friend of my father, I also began to know him well. And he would discourse. He said that he was initiated by one of the disciples of Swamiji's disciple, disciple, who initiated him into the Radha Swami faith. And he practiced it. And he said, I did so much meditation. I went into experiences of every level of consciousness. He said, maybe I even experienced such khand, which they say is our destination. I had all the experiences. And I realized I had got nothing. I got experience. I never knew who the experiencer was. Enlightenment is not about experience. Enlightenment is about the experiencer. Who had the experience? Because if you can find who had the experience, then you discover the totality of consciousness and the reason for the whole of creation. Then you find the real creator. Not having new experiences. The word experience is so limited. And sitting here, it's even limited to mental experience. You can't even talk of any experience beyond the mind as an experience. It may be a state of being, state of awareness, not an experience. It's the self. It's the knowledge of the self. Baba Fakir Chand said in one of his discourses, after all those experiences, I realized I was completely blank. I knew nothing about spirituality. He says, I learned about spirituality from other people, my disciples. He said, when my disciples began to tell me that they see me in their meditation, I said, how can they see me in my meditation? I don't go into their meditation. He, he recounted some of the experiences he had in the war, Second World War, he was there. The military, three people, his disciples, were ambushed by the enemy. And they said, we are going to die, let's pray together. They all three sat together and they prayed to their master, Babaji, help us. We are ambushed, we are going to die. I know you will take us back. And he appeared. And all three of them saw him. And he said, don't worry, you are not going to die today. Go behind where you're standing, there's a bush there, under that there's a tunnel, come out of it, it'll take you outside the ambushing enemy. And they went back, they found, the, he disappeared. They went back and there was a tunnel, they came out, they ran straight to him. He was also in one of the bases there. They went to him and said, Babaji, thank you for saving our life. He said, what are you talking about? I never saved anybody's life, I am frightened myself, a bomb might fall on me. And you're thanking me. He said, no, you came. You came and told us about the way to escape, and that's why we came here. 
He said, I went nowhere. And he explained these things in his discourse. Another woman was very sick at night, living in the same town in Usharpur, had a big pain in the belly, and she prayed to her master, who was Baba Fakir Chand. Baba Ji, help me. He appeared in front of her and said, Don't worry, daughter, there is a little black salt lying on the shelf there. Just take a little bit, you'll be all right. She went, picked up the black salt, and she was all right. In the morning, she rushed to him to thank him. Said, thank you very much for coming last night and helping me. He said, let me clarify. I don't go into ladies' bedrooms at night at all. Please don't thank me. In one of his discourses, he explains, these are the people who made me wonder, how can they see me? Of course, I am doing this duty because my master told me to initiate these people. And I've initiated them like I am initiated by my master. And I want to understand how they can see me. And then he said, I discovered that all the meditation I had done, if I switch from the experience to the experiencer, I discovered the experiencer was the same. Who that lady was, who those three people were, and who they saw with the same experiencer. Then I realized the truth. That is enlightenment. He said, I was only enlightened when I discovered from these experiences of people. And yet, one day, there was a festival. I remember, uh, that's very interesting. One of his disciples was Sant Tarachand, another saint, who got enlightened during his time. And during the festival, Sant Tarachand also came to Sharpur to attend the festivities. So, Baba Fakir Chand made him sit next to him on the stage. After he gave a discourse, I know nothing. You have to find everything inside yourself. It's the same truth inside that is in me. There's no difference in it. If you find the truth, it'll be that there's only one experiencer, and there are not many. There are no two who's helping each other. There's only one helping everyone. Things like that he was talking. Then he said, I am very happy. My friend Santarachand is here, and I'll request him to say a few words. So Santarachand spoke. He said, don't believe what this guy is saying. He's telling about his master. If he says he knows nothing, I would not travel hundreds of miles to come and put my head on his feet. Everything I got is from this man. So don't listen to what he's saying. Now both are right in their own description of what they're saying. That if we have, do not have an experience built into our own experience of another being, who tells us what to do, how to do, and explains things that we ourselves don't know. If this doesn't happen in our life, how do we ever find out the truth about our own self? What is the reality? The reality is, if we are creating this universe through our consciousness, which alone is the reality, and the universe is being created from there, don't you see? that the masters are also being created from there. Don't you see the truth is that when we as a seeker are looking for something and we find a master, a perfect living master, he's also our own creation. If everything is a creation, how can you make a separation that one thing is not? Everything that you create is coming from the mind that the master is also a creation of your own mind. But what's the difference then? The difference is that you have yourself made this arrangement that instead of saying, I will automatically know these things because I'll be so much immersed in the, having the experience of a created reality, when I want to end this reality, there'll be no way for me to pull away from this reality because of the attraction they put into the only reality. I will place within this reality something that will look like different from me and will pull me out and will know more than me, will know everything about my reality, and will tell me about it, initiate me into it, make me feel that I have been taken by that person, ultimately discover it was all myself. That's the truth. So, imagine if we know the real, real truth of the whole thing, and nothing is existing outside of our own creation from our own consciousness. There is only one total consciousness. It has never been divided. Now, if that is creating 
so many divided personalities, each one thinking differently, talking differently. We can see in a dream, 20 people, they all talk differently. When we wake up, there was only one dreamer. They were part of the dream. If all the creation is part of a huge dream, dream within a dream, within a dream, within a dream, to make it even more remote from the source of all this. Then when the, one of the dreams, we make an arrangement how to get out. This is the arrangement made by totality itself in order to allow this play to work in a particular way when you want to get out, you can. And we ourselves in that state, not in the total state, in the state of individuation, in the state of being souls, spirits, separate, feeling that we are individual souls, never separated from the total. The individual souls are not pulled out of the totality, it will no longer remain total. If even one soul is taken out from the total, it won't remain total. Nothing has been taken out. It's only an awareness, a change of awareness that you are one. It's like this cup of water. All this is water. I can also say this drops of water. I can see one drop right here. Has he been separated from the rest? No. What has caused it to be a drop? My awareness of the drop. This is the game of awareness, game of consciousness. A game in which the consciousness can create that you have been separated where you are in the same, total. That's why I want to repeat my own experience that when I was young and because of my birth in a family that believed in great master, I grew up with those ideas, but I revolted also somewhat. I rebelled that this is just because they believe in something. If I went to another religion, they had believe in something else. If I went to another guru, they believe in something else. It's just an accident that I'm born here. And therefore, they explained to me the spiritual path as that the, our reality is a big ocean and we are drops of that ocean. We have been separated from that, our true reality, our ocean. And we moved away millions of miles and millions of years away from our reality. And this is not right. The drop is only a drop. Our totality is a whole ocean. Therefore, through meditation, through the spiritual progress, this drop has to now somehow struggle and go back and merge in the ocean. That's how it is described. Some people still do. That we are drops of consciousness, separated from consciousness for such a long time. It's time to go back home and we are finding our way, struggling through different methods, meditation, hard work, seva, whatever we are doing to go back. And I thought to myself at this very concept, if I am a drop of water, I am enjoying it. I know I am living. I am seeing life. And life is colorful. Even if I take the uh, example of a drop of water, it shines, the sun shines, create a rainbow in it. It shines. And now they are telling me, struggle hard to go back into the ocean and get merged in it. I will lose everything I have. Ocean will gain one more drop. It will never bother about it. What a lose-lose situation. And they are telling it's a good thing to be on a spiritual path like this. I said, I can never follow that. But I was wrong. It took me some years to realize I was wrong. This is not the situation at all. We have never been separated from the ocean. It remains total. It's an awareness within the ocean that we are drops. And the expansion of awareness makes us into the ocean again. It's not going anywhere. It's not journeying anywhere. There's no spiritual journey. The spiritual journey is awakening to our reality that we are part of the ocean all the time, that we were always there. Not only always there, there's nothing else existing except through illusion. That's the enlightenment one can get, that this is different from what is being explained. So that is why totality of consciousness has never left its totality. The whole show, including what we are doing here, is taking place within that. It, nothing has happened outside of it. It's all a game of consciousness within itself. 
that we are creating all these experiences and creating the many from the one. The many is beautiful because any time I can start counting the number of drops in this water. If I don't, it's just a cup of water. And when I make it drops, I can make hundred drops. I can make million, make them smaller. I can change the size of the drop, make it smaller and smaller. And I can make it large drops, then make small drops within that. That's exactly where we are today. We are units of consciousness, but within totality of consciousness, and the whole spiritual path is to expand to that level. Now, while we are here, it's very interesting. What is going to take us to that state of awareness? Nothing from outside. Nothing whatsoever. Because if the whole creation is taking place from what believe, what we believe is our own self, and that belief is very real. I sometimes find that people say, give me proof. Anything I say, what is the proof? Their higher levels of experiences show the proof. Their research can't home away from this world, show the proof. Their life after death shows proof. Everybody is asking proof. I said, have you ever asked for proof that you exist? Do you exist or no? Nobody has ever asked for proof. And everybody is convinced. That means there can be some awareness, some knowledge in us of which no proof is needed because the proof is part of its own experience as the proof. This is one of those that we exist is already proven to us and nobody has questioned it. Whether you are a religious person, you are a spiritual person, you are an atheist, you believe in God or don't believe in God, you, you believe that you exist. If you exist, then the question arises, where do you exist? For certain. Not that there is, I can see other people, you might have created them. I, I've, all, everything else will require proof. Where do you think do you exist? Where are you saying, I am sure I exist? Where are you saying this from? It doesn't take too long to find out you're saying in your own head, you're saying to yourself. So the discovery of the truth, of which you need no proof right from the beginning, is to discover the self within yourself, not outside. Nothing can be found outside. Everything has to be found within yourself. Therefore, these are parts of experiences to have the radiant form of a master, to hear the bell sounds, to do meditation. These are just for the mind. Our mind has been trained and brought up, absolutely indoctrinated, that without struggle, without doing something, you get nothing. And when we say there is something called spiritual awareness, mind says, I have to do something to get it. Okay, then do it. Therefore, the whole process which has been taught to us to do this, do this, do this, is for the mind. Now, supposing somebody says, okay, if it's for the mind, I'll ignore it. The mind won't let you ignore it. Mind will step in. But you can't sit at home and get anything. The arguments of the mind when we sit alone are terrible. You try to give the mind a free, uh, free time to think of anything. It will come with such bizarre thoughts. You can try. We have tried in meditation sessions. When we say, allow the mind to think anything, you can see what it thinks. When we say that the truth is lying inside, and that's all we have to discover, the mind wants to know how. And so we give how. So we lay down a whole process of finding the truth. At the end, what do we find? We find that all that we are doing is for realizing more and more of the nature, function of the mind. That's all we do. No meditation has ever taken anybody beyond the mind. Let me tell you that. No meditation of any kind. Because meditation is a mental process. No matter what. It's a matter of space and time. What can take us beyond is what exists beyond space and time. And there is something happening to us right here, which is beyond space and time. When we fall in love with somebody, it's beyond space and time. I can tell you that. How? It's instantaneous. 
we cannot say that it took so much time to do it. You can develop it mentally further, but it's instantaneous with no time, no space. Love is such a feature. Therefore, if I can point out to one thing that is real beyond the mind, it's love. Pure love. Not uh, attachments and uh, other things, or sexual attractions or so, they're called like love. No, I mean real love where you are pulled and don't know why. You're pulled by somebody and you don't know why. That is the secret of going beyond the mind. That is the only secret that will help you. That is why if somebody has the capacity to overcome the mind's thoughts and say, I want to go to the direct thing, you'll find if you have that kind of love and devotion experienced in physical form, you are really bypassing a lot of the struggle part that we go through. Love and devotion is the secret that can take you beyond the mind, nothing else. Nothing else. So it's good to remember that ultimately we'll be left with that option. And if we can start applying that option now to the best of our capacity, then it's worthwhile to know about it. So it's love and devotion within to something that we think is outside but is actually inside. The physical form of a human being who is guiding us and we call him a perfect living master. Why do we call him perfect living master? Because he, as a created part of ourselves, is fully aware of the whole method and we place it in our experience to be able to have our own experience. If that follows, that we can think of that as part of our own self inside, not outside, and we have that love and devotion for that being inside us, I'll tell you, you'll get the RF radiance form in no time. This is the secret, not saying I want ASAP so that I can deal with the problem of the world. Not like that. I'm very happy that you came and gave some time to this subject because I want to share that we have great opportunity. We are very lucky that we are human beings. We are very lucky that we have that element of seeking the truth. And that's what will lead us to discovery of the truth. We'll have a break and I'll come and see you uh, later in a couple of hours again. Thank you.